Hello. Hello. So do you want to start or do you want me to start? Sure. Into which? So just to just start, uh, I should let you know that English is not my first language, so if you had trouble understanding anything you see because of pronunciation issues, please let me know and I will try to, to clarify. Okay, will do. Uh, so basically my contention with you is that um, I believe there is overwhelming evidence that um, SARS-CoV-2 was created in a lab, namely the Wuhan Institute for Virology. Do you have any issues with that? Well, I mean, I don't know enough about biology to comment on whether your understanding of this problem is correct or not. But I do know that American scientists and European scientists and international health and scientific organizations and journals have said that it's extremely unlikely and that there's no near to no for that. So I can't comment on it myself. I know most people that actually study and, and understand and know this topic say that you are likely to be wrong. Okay, so that extremely unlikely quote, that comes from a paper by Anderson and crew in uh, Nature. I can go over Nature's conflict of interest real quick. Uh, Nature have censored over a thousand articles at the request of China, so they are not a trustworthy source on this. Uh, Anderson I himself... for that. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, Anderson himself, um, the paper is utterly ridiculous if you've read through it. He... Um, he is really just lying through his fucking teeth the entire time. Yeah, I'll send you the, uh... So that is them censoring it, because this idea that scientists have said this, so therefore it must be true, it's not like every single virologist is siding with Anderson here. It's basically Anderson, all like the gain-of-function research guys, the guys who have a lot to lose, who have funded a lot of gain-of-function research, they're saying it's no chance at all. But, like, you know, their reasoning in the paper is utterly ridiculous. I can go over their uh, reasoning as well. So uh, Anderson says that it has optimized binding to, ACE, to the ACE2 receptor, but in a different way than that was previously calculated. So therefore it has to be uh, natural selection because we didn't predict this. And it's, it's like he doesn't even think that advancements can happen without being published. Is it not entirely possible that they came up with a new way to do it? Or that it developed through, um, what's the word, uh, uh, serial passage in cell culture? Because what you do to make a virus more effective in gain-of-function research is you have serial passage where you have it, you basically accelerate evolution. So you take, it from, uh, you take a bunch of viruses, put them into a cell culture or an animal or something, and then you take, you allow them to kind of infect it, you take only the most successful viruses from that batch and infect another cell culture. Keep doing that over and over and over again until you get a very, very infectious virus. Oh, first thing, uh, I know that the... How, how's the name of the science star? Patterson? Uh, Anderson. Anderson, right, close enough. Uh, I know Anderson didn't say it was impossible, just... Uh, the words you used were extremely unlikely or not likely or similar wording. So you you ask, is it was it possible that Chinese found another way to do it? Uh, sure, I, I, I think it's possible. And I don't think anyone would claim it's not possible. The claim here is whether it's likely or not. And even if I... I, I have to, do, to look through this first to give me, because I, I don't know if it's uh, a good source or not, so I can't answer, I can't discuss that right now. But even if we assume that nature really has a conflict of, of interest, may, even if we, we assume that Pat, Patterson, I'm oh, sorry, Anderson uh, is lying or something along those lines, that would still lead to the problem with other organizations and other uh, independent, independent in the sense that they are not tied to Anderson and his research, uh, working and, and some visited the, the lab in, in Wuhan 
and they all said it was unlikely. And we can find news about that like pretty much everywhere. We can find people from from Australia, Australia saying that. We can find people from the Netherlands saying that. We can find uh, the HWO team saying the same thing. So again, I can't comment on, on whether the source is good and whether Anderson's lying or not. So. So yeah, I will then... for now take your word for it, but it, it doesn't, even if that was true, it doesn't prove what you're claiming to prove. So yeah, um, basically those international scientists you were talking about, it sounds a lot like the WHO team which was sent over. You've got uh, the Dr. Thea Fisher from the mm -hmm. Netherlands, uh, you've got uh, John Watson from England, you've got uh, Dominic Dwyer from uh, West Med Hospital in Australia, and I went over, there's 10 of them. And four of those ten I have found a conflict of interest for. So I can go over those if you want. Uh... Sure. Uh, so... There were more than ten, right? But, but go on. No, there was ten investigators on the WHO team. They were the sci there was the expert scientists yes, who yes, There were ten ten in the WHO team and then other other groups of scientists that were not in the WHO team went together. But go on, explain the conflicts of interest. And with sources, please. Okay, yes. Uh, so Dwyer, uh, he works for West Med Hospital, which has ties to a Chinese hospital that engages in organ theft of Uyghurs at the behest of the CCP. I'll send you that article now. Yeah, I do know about the Chinese... Uh, there's Uyghur also... Problem, let's say. Um, Dr. Hung Nguyen uh, Viet. He is a Vietnamese scientist from the International Livestock Research Institute, an institute which receives which receives a decent amount of funding from China and its allies. So that's a conflict of interest. Uh, I'm not uh, sure I, I agree with the idea that just because uh, the organization he works for gets money from China or, or from any other country that he has an inherent intrinsic well, conflict of interest. How is that not a conflict of interest? What would a conflict of interest be if not receiving funding from the people you're investigating? I'll go over the other two in whilst you think of that. They're, the worst one of all, no, Peter, no. Uh, Dr. Peter Dezak from EcoHealth Alliance. Um, so uh, EcoHealth Alliance, his company that he's president of, they directly fund the uh, coronavirus research at the Wuhan laboratory. And uh, it, was, it was because of Dazak that uh, they were able to secure grants from the NIH to uh, pursue this research further. It, uh, Dazak was essentially Xi's middleman between uh, Xi and the US. Uh, Xi Zhongli, if you want to look that up. And then um, there's also Dr. Farang El Mud uh, Mubasher, who uh, works for the Qatar government. And Qatar is an ally of uh, China. So I got... So here's the list of all of them. Yep, here's the, uh, there's Dazax. Mm -hmm. Oops. I think that's it. See, but that's the thing. I don't really trust the, a source like the New York Post. So I can look at the, the other sources you sent from SPS and inside higher ID. But New York Post is a, I wouldn't say it's a no starter, but it has some serious credibility problems. Uh, well, I can find you a, a Medium article from Nicholas Wade, who is a, a eminent science uh, reporter who also says the same thing. You can Google Nicholas sure. Wade all you want as well. That would be better. So yeah, uh, he uh, as a staff writer for the Science Times section of the New York Times. So if you trust the New York Times, you got to trust Wade. I'm gonna be honest, uh, when I came here for the debate, I was expecting us to debate on what I was discussing like two days ago, I believe, which is how the HWO 
which sorry the WHO functions how they hire people how they hire scientists things like that so I admit I, I haven't looked exactly into whether uh, what are the odds or what are the, the chances of the COVID virus being created in a lab and then escaping or something of the kind. So like you can give me several sources. I will, I promise you, I will read every one of them and then I will find other sources. If they contradict each other, we can talk about those. But it's just not a, what I was expecting us to talk about. Which is fine, just that I can't really counter the points because I haven't looked through the, the proper, I haven't done the proper research for this. Sure, uh, so for the, um, how the how the HWO uh, functions, um, you were saying that um, the fact that uh, the uh, director of the WHO is a Chinese ally doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be biased. Because he doesn't select the teams. No, 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 no. So, I mean, like. So, no, 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 so I, I don't know how to properly pronounce this, but biased again uh, for the Chinese. That's the first thing. Second is that, yes, uh, the guy got there. He was elected by the World Health Assembly. And with support from several Western nations as well. So like, by that logic, he's also an ally for, all, for the European Union and I don't think the United States voted for him, but other Western countries did. Maybe India, for example. So it's wrong to imply that just because they got there and his country is technically a, a Chinese ally, even though he has major commercial and financial relationships with other countries in the region, that it means the guy himself is, is biased. Ash. Go on. Sure. So, Just um, to, do, to clarify that. Yesterday, you were also saying how you know it wouldn't matter if he was like the most Chinese guy in the world. It wouldn't matter if he was Xi Jinping himself, because he doesn't get to select the teams which go uh, and investigate these countries. But I think, as I have shown earlier, yes. I have found uh, conflicts of interest in favor of China for forty percent of the investigation team. And I was just searching earlier today, so it could be even more than that. Which just uh, I couldn't find from googling. I mean, that seems pretty fucking compromised if 40% of your investigation team has a conflict of interest. I mean, I, I can't reply to that because I haven't looked into whether they actually have a conflict of interest or not, or, or whether the source is wrong, or whether they got something wrong, something like that. So, yeah. And it, really, I think it's going to be extremely hard to find a, a top-level scientist in the world that doesn't have a financial relationship to countries like China, India, or some European countries. And does that mean that they have an uh, inherent conflict of interest against all of those countries? Can they not work in the field? But that's a complicated matter. I, I would say that after a certain point, I agree that there is a conflict of interest. So depending on how the money is given, depending on whether the professional is uh, feel some pressure or is pressure maybe even indirectly to reach a certain conclusion or to, to not expose the source of the funding but for example there may be a, a guy that works for an American hospital and then that American hospital gets its money from uh, a Chinese hospital I wouldn't go as far as saying that this person has an uh, interesting conflict of interest in the case but we can we can look over those cases later on because again I haven't looked into that. I'd have to. I mean, I'm not. So to clarify, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be working in science at all because they have connections to China. I'm saying they shouldn't be investigating China because yes. there are plenty of experts in virology 
who are not affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party in any way, shape, or form. And you're saying something about um, if they are specifically trying to cover up their ties, then that's probably you know a sign that they have a conflict of interest. And Dazak did exactly that in a prominent open letter uh, published in the Lancet on the 19th of February, organised by Peter Dazak. Uh, the signers claimed boldly that they have no competing interests at all, no ties to China or anything like that. And they're just independent researchers trying to do good science. And in fact, uh, to compound that, on the 9th of December, uh, before uh, Dezak knew about the outbreak of coronavirus, uh, he was talking in glowing terms about how uh, the work researchers at the Wuhan lab were creating these brand new viruses so that they could then study. He was doing this on an interview uh, um, with, I can't remember the name of the people in the interview. It's on YouTube, I'll send in. So about the 28 minute mark or so that he says it. This week in virology. Sure, I think we'll look later. Yeah, I mean, like, if we have this, um, a conflict of interest for 40% of the WHO investigation team, and the leader of the WHO is a Chinese ally, he keeps shaking his hands with, you know, Xi Jinping all the time, and the, the WHO in fact put out a statement, it was something to the effect of, there is no evidence of human-to-human -human transition, uh, transmission rather, uh, you know, earlier on in the, early on in the um, outbreak. So it seems that they are entirely um, compromised. And I can go over some of the, uh, not specifically virology evidence, because uh, you were saying you don't want to debate virology per se. I can go over like, you know, just how crazy it is that uh, this this would have happened. So basically what happened was the bats are an endangered species and they live a thousand miles away. Uh, so, 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 wait, 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 wait. Before we talk about the bats, let me just respond to the point you made about the director general of the, the H the, the bill. Uh, so the point is, it's true that he shakes hands with Xi Jinping, and I won't deny that, and I shouldn't deny that, but, but like, that's literally his job. He shakes hands with international mandatories of the entire world and other international organizations, mainly for to get funding for the, the, the organization. So just because he's seen with uh, Xi Jinping, he shakes hands with Xi Jinping, he, even if he's... Uh, somewhat close, let's say, with Xi Jinping, you can really see the same thing and say the same thing about his relations with other other major donate, uh, donators for the WHO, including, I don't know, Bill Gates, for example, who's one of the biggest donators. So you can find several situations of those two guys' meetings. You can find situations of the, the director general meeting with the US president or the surgeon general and things along those lines. Hmm. I don't the other comment you said... I'm just going to say, I don't think that if, don't. The, if this happened in the US, I don't think you'd be saying no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. I don't think you'd be covering that hard for the US. Well, the thing is, that's like... Uh, the, the, the WHO has protocols in place that in you, you we may dislike all our, or like these protocols, but that's how they work. That... When there are, uh, let's say, signs of a new disease, a new problem, uh, health problem, things like that, the who doesn't necessarily go there in the beginning. It's the duty of the country to to report that to the who, and then the who has to uh, evaluate the the information that that country gave them and then comment on it. So China gave the WHO a specific amount of information and China told the WHO, okay, okay here, look, there's no evidence of human transmission, human to human transmission. And the WHO just had that evidence to work with at the time. Like, unfortunately, that's just how it works. And then, so it's not like they had a choice of saying, no, no, we, we cannot trust the, the Chinese government. We cannot say that, no, that's, the, their job, their pro, their their goal there, is to reply. Oh, look, we found this. China found this new virus, and they say it's not. Uh, they say that there is no human transmission, and according to the information they gave, they gave us, 
there is no human transmission. So I understand how it, it may look poorly for them, but and it's just like you can find the same situation with Ebola or other diseases, you just everything. So really the fault here is, in my opinion at least, is on China for either lying or trying to cover up. So uh, there's a valid argument on whether it was the fault of the central government or whether it was the fault of the local government. There, there's a valid argument for that, but they either lied or they decided to hide information for the hood. The hood just did its job as it should do, really. It can't just uh, skip over the, the protocols. Well, I would say I'd like to know why their protocols for a potential pandemic are to not investigate at all. I'd like to know why, why on earth that would be the protocol, and I'd like, uh, you know, to can I, you know find a press release where they say that's... Uh, yeah, sure, I'm just going to go on and, like, you know, the fact that the, the Chinese government was doing all this stuff to cover up the fact that this was happening, does that not kind of speak to being that they knew they were guilty there? Like, you don't cover up a natural-born virus, do you? And let, let's, say, let's say it is natural. The fact that the Chinese government were covering this up and deliberately spreading it, is that not evil? Sure. Uh, for, okay. First, for the, the former, the, the first point about how, how and why there are protocols for this kind of, of pandemic. So pandemic is a very specific designation that the WHO gives after a certain threshold of infections and a certain number. And if it has infected several countries, things like that. At first, they have to operate with the information the country gives them. So if China had said, okay, there are signs of human transmission, there may be signs of human transmission, and we think those people, like, we think infected people may have it travel to, I don't know, India. So the situation, the, the answer of the WHO sh would and should have been different. But the problem is that they were operating with Chinese uh, information, let's say. And just for the sake of curiosity, after this whole scenario, they have actually been looking into changing the protocols a bit because they don't want to rely that much on the country. So they are changing to a situation in which uh, if there are certain kinds of diseases like respiratory diseases that uh, show up in a country and people don't know what it is, they are not going to wait the country to, to say whether it's there are human, there are signs of human transmission or not. They're just going to go there by themselves, investigate by themselves, so as not to rely on the country so much. Uh, so for the second, well, uh, so you mentioned there about um, uh, the WHO, you know, uh, it's their job to declare when it's a pandemic after certain factors are reached. And in fact, those factors were reached quite early on. It had infected multiple uh, health areas or something they're called, and the WHO still didn't call it a pandemic. They were very, very tardy in calling it a pandemic. It took them very, very long. Well, yes. I mean, to a point, right? I... There are more factors on that it, for it to be, the correct wording is that we are talking about the global health emergency, if I'm not mistaken, and that requires a recommendation from the emergency committee, and then the director general declares it, he can declare it by himself. And I remember that there was some debate in that committee over whether it was a, a true pandemic, a true global emergency, or whether it was going to be something very localized, maybe not in China, but maybe in, in the South Asia region. I personally agree that they should have uh, declared it a pandemic or a global health emergency sooner, and but they didn't. So I can't comment on what exactly the people in the committee thought, uh, how what was their, their thought process for that. So, I mean, like, but, do you think it's either going to be well, that they're incompetent, because I knew it was going to be a pandemic, uh, early February, so am I smarter than than all the virologist experts at the WHO? Or are they incompetent, or are they perhaps malicious? I mean, I, I think we are oversimplifying it a bit. Mm, I mean, so those are the two options. Are... Either they're incompetent... Because I, mean, I, I predicted it. I, it's either it's either that they're incompetent 
or they're malicious there. I think they're malicious. I don't think I'm smarter than virologist experts at the WHO. I think they probably know that it was going to be a pandemic. I think they know that blatantly. Um, but they're malicious about it. They didn't want people to know. They wanted a cover for China, essentially. So but it's either that or I'm smarter than them when it comes to virology. You know, just to be clear, you know that a global health emergency was declared in January, right? No, specifically the pandemic. I remember specifically that they were very, very tardy <laughs> on declaring as a pandemic. I remember watching uh, Chris Martinson, he was pissed off about it, and, uh, you know, fucking John Campbell and all that. So, okay, but the thing is, the thing that really matters here is the global health emergency. It has the actual policy effects, let's say. A pandemic, just a general... A general term... But pandemic is the scary to... word that gets people to be scared. And they should have been, you know, using that far earlier. They were trying to make... They were trying to, like, you know, oh, it's just a health emergency. We're just kind of... It's sugarcoat it a little bit. We don't want to call it a pandemic, even though it clarify, Even though it qualifies for our definition of pandemic. We don't want to call it that, though, for reasons... Uh, I'm not sure I agree. You can see that they very rarely use the word pandemic, even in Ebola situations. It was yeah, yeah. In, 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 in Ebola it. situations, they're fucking that didn't that didn't become a pandemic. But this was very very quickly a pandemic, and they were not using the word pandemic. I think because they're covering for China. See, but it doesn't make sense to cover for China if you're going to declare a, a global health emergency, right? The, the uh, I mean, they, they have to the eventually. Emergency declaration of the policy itself. I, imagine if they still hadn't declared it now. That would clearly be a massive, like, okay, the who is controlled by China. That would be a massive PR loss for China. So after a certain point, they've got to kind of, you know, go, oh, yeah, it's a pandemic, okay. I don't think the, the, the reasoning behind whether it's a pen, they specifically use the word pandemic or not is just to cover for China. If they had taken like a very long time to declare a global health emergency, I could maybe agree that there was something wrong. I wouldn't necessarily say that it would, they were covering for China. I would say that maybe there they are competency issues there. But again, pandemic is just uh, the word here. The proper uh, term, the proper declaration that they had to use was a uh, global health emergency, which they did before, like early January, things like that. I don't really think whether they use it the word pandemic in February or in March is that relevant, and I certainly don't think it's related to. Like, whether they are covering for China or not. I think it's very related. I think they would have been far sooner to call it a pandemic if it was anywhere else in the world. Because if you have fucking idiot, if you have fucking cunts on YouTube who are going, hey, this qualifies for every who criteria to qualify as a pandemic, and they're able to tell you that it's a pandemic, why don't the World Health Organization know what their own criteria are? We do know. Well, the thing is, there are, like, it's a very complicated topic, I'm trying to simplify it a bit. There are several kinds of emergency, right? So the first kind of emergency was declared back in, I don't know, December. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the global health emergency, which is the top one, is a tier four emergency declaration. So they had been amping up, let's say, that kind of declaration in that implies policy changes, like their funding gets, uh, gets some places of the, the who get less funding and then that funding gets sent to the emergency committee, for example, to the, the field operatives, things like that. I, again, I, I don't think whether they use the, the word specifically pandemic, which doesn't really have an actual policy effect. It may cause some people to be more, more concerned about the situation, but I don't think whether they, they use it in February or in March has any major differences, makes any major differences. Uh, and I don't think they, well, it's done not covered for China. And I would even go as far as saying like people, who work at the, at the WHO 
used the word before, like they were talking, there, there's an American, the head of the emergency committee is an American scientist and he, he like employed, he used the word pandemic several times just in, in his press uh, interviews, let's say, in, in other official uh, communications. I mean, he just does, didn't. Does that not reinforce go. my view that this is because they're Chinese allies that they're not calling it a pandemic? Because you're saying that America, a non Chinese ally, was perfectly fine calling it a pandemic when it very clearly was a pandemic. But it's the guys who are friendly with China, they're not calling it a pandemic. Does that not kind of reinforce my view there? And the, the thing is, the people who declare a pandemic, like the guy I just talked about, the American who's the head of the emergency committee at the WHO, his his committee is the one declaring it whether it's a it's a pandemic or not or whether it's a global health emergency or not and his committee makes the recommendation and then a public recommendation and then the director general can accept or decline that recommendation so he was calling it a pandemic i know that some other people in the committee had had it was that word before uh, as well it just was an official, let's say, designation, and I, I'm not sure. I, I personally think it's like it doesn't really matter whether they use it officially or not, because again, they were talking about it in the like day-to-day -day operations, and they had already issued a global health emergency, which really looks pretty bad for China, especially because the way they worded that how that uh, that emergency declaration. So if we were thinking like, oh, they're going to benefit China or help China, I don't think they would have issued those declarations, the emergency declarations, that, like the entire one declaration, the entire two declaration. I don't think they would have issued the global health emergency declaration. I don't think they would have been using the word pandemic uh, like in official communications or even press briefings and conferences. Especially because the guy is, again, American. Hmm. Uh, I mean, most of the scientists in that committee are from Western countries. And I say most because I don't know if it's all or not. So, yeah, so of, I, of I, course, just of, course about it. of course, the non Chinese allies are going to be fine using pandemic and official communications. That's obviously going to be the case. Uh, but it's the Chinese allies who weren't. They were kind of uneasy about it. And as you say, the, the who isn't this monolithic entity, there are different countries that make it up. And I think, you know, they couldn't get, the China doesn't have, like, complete dictatorial control over the WHO. I think they just kind of influenced it away from pandemic for just long enough to get it to spread to other countries. I mean, I, uh, I can see a concern about uh, the China trying to lie to the WHO or trying to manipulate information like they did with the, the human to human transmission. I can't see that happening. I wouldn't necessarily say that this was the case, but I can see a situation in which China is telling the emergency committee, for example, okay, hold on, don't declare it a pandemic. We have some evidence that it's not one. And they, and then the committee decides to, okay, let's, let's wait another week or two to see that evidence. And then it turns out that there was no evidence to situations like that. I can accept that. The thing is, China does influence the WHO like, to a point, right? Because they, they provide funding, so that's important. They help decide where the funding goes. They have allies, things like that. The thing is, the, the people that are in charge of calling it a pandemic or calling it a, a global health emergency uh, and things like that. So the, in this case, the emergency committee they have the say on those matters and the head of that committee is an american guy most of the people in that committee are from western countries i know there's a canadian there so yeah but you said I, you said I, before it needs to be signed off well, by the director general so if this entire committee is saying that yes. yeah this is a pandemic then the director general just doesn't sign off on it for ages does that not kind of enforce my view that see but that's no, 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 no that's not no 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 that's not what happens the, what happens is the committee issues a, a public declaration 
and then the director general can there's a process for the director general asking specific other committees that I don't really remember like immediately right now, but it, it varies on topics. So it's if it's a, a emergency declaration on respiratory a virus, for example, the director general is going to ask the committee in charge of viruses and things like that. And whether the director general like it, it has a time frame for it to be done. It has to be done in a specific time frame. The guy can't just uh, wait and just not sign it. And I believe you can find that the, uh, I believe the day after the, the emergency committee recommended the declaration, maybe, maybe two days later, the director general accepted and they who officially, let's say, declared it an emergency or a pandemic or whatever term we are using this case. I mean, I don't want to sound like so, a cop, uh, but can you, do you have a citation for that? For what claim specifically? Um, that uh, it was two days after the uh, committee were calling it a pandemic, sure, that the director general me, called it a pandemic. And whilst you're looking that up, I just, I, I just want to go over like the, um, the just sheer unlikelihood that this came from nature, because the uh, proposed a natural reservoir is an endangered bat that lives 1,500 kilometers away from Wuhan in Yunnan province. And it said that it went from this bat into an endangered pangolin. Uh, so it would have to be hanging around, there would have to be a lot of bats hanging around a lot of endangered pangolins for very long. I think there's, um, how many is it? Uh, there are... You guys talking about? There's a, yeah, there's a popular uh, uh, talking about uh what the fact that the coronavirus is uh, not a natural virus it was made in a lab so yeah there's uh 13, horseshoe bats the in the world yep uh there are even fewer pangolins i think it's something like three thousand of the specific type of pangolin than i think it was uh so these guys would have to be hanging around for very very long and then the um what well, they don't what well, they don't advertise on the news but what they say in all their little papers and stuff is that it would have to then jump into a human population and they then have to hang around this human population for very very long and then one guy from that population like they it would just be like basically just hanging around in this dude for a very long time without you know him passing it on to other people and then it needs to adapt to the human form within that one dude and then that guy has to travel all the way to Wuhan without infecting anybody along the way. And then he starts infecting people at the fish market in Wuhan. Or it was released from a lab. Those are the two options. And like the, it's not like this would be some crazy research which was never done before. Gain of function research is like routine along the entire world. And uh, Shi Zhongli, the head of coronavirus research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, she says that um, her lab will often engage in this gain of function research at uh, biosafety level two which is the same biosafety level of a u.s dentist's office so this is clearly not very safe conditions to be working in in fact their biosafety level four lab which is where i'd want them to be doing it was out of commission at the time right uh you made a specific claim about the bats being like not near enough if i'm not mistaken i was mm -hmm. i wasn't paying full attention because i'm just looking here for for yeah. a sp very specific source so if you could just repeat that and then if it's it provide a, a source for the bats being fired if i got that correctly yeah uh, yeah so sure um so the bats are uh well, uh, 1,500 kilometers away from Wuhan in Yunnan province. Uh, he goes over that in the uh, Nicholas Wade article. You can also just, like, you know, Google it. It's just public knowledge. They live in Yunnan. It's 1,500 kilometers away from Wuhan. Um, it's right down in the south of China. It's very, very far away. And these bats have a 50 kilometer radius that they kind of travel around normally. So it isn't like it flew all the way to Wuhan or anything that infected a pangolin over there. It had to infect a pangolin over in Yunnan, and then that pangolin had to infect a human over in Yunnan. So that's how these uh, viruses kind of infect new hosts. They have to get first a very, very unlikely successful transfer to that host. And then it kind of needs to acclimate to its new environment. It needs to kind of mutate a little bit so that it can properly infect the human. And we've not found any precursor viruses to this thing. There are no precursors. So that just, it doesn't track. Right. Well, I, 
can't really comment on that because again, I, I need a source and I need to leak the source and then. I already gave you the Nicholas Wade source. Letter. Uh, it's the same source, right? Yeah. Because I, I haven't gone through it fully yet. Sure, I, I'll take a look at it later. Uh, well, I, I'm trying to find a specific claim about like how much time the 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 committee, how much time later after, how much time after the committee decided to to issue the declaration that the director general assigned it. So I am finding several sources that specifically claim that the the emergency committee recommended that and then the director general signed it off. I will be trying to find a source for the when to to to, to, to this claim because it's going to be hard when to, to find. Sure. Uh, so while sure. I can just I can just. So if you went, I can send like several sources about how the a public or a global health emergency declaration was issued, and then it was recommended by the emergency committee. Yeah, or sure. if you went to, I can just keep it fine. Okay. So, uh, so whilst you're getting that up, uh, I can watch what's going off. So yeah, if you whilst you're looking that up, I'm gonna just gonna go over some of the uh, monkeying that scientists have been doing. So basically, um, scientists have recreated the 1918 flu virus in a lab. Uh, they have shown how the almost extinct polio virus can be synthesized from published DNA alone. And um, the WHO, in fact, have backed research into inserting smallpox genes into related pox viruses. And in November 2015, Xi Zhongli, the bat lady of uh, Wuhan, uh, created a novel virus by taking the backbone of the SARS-1 virus and replacing its spike protein with that from another bat virus known as SHC-014 COV. So do you want the um, citation for those? Yes, I will proceed to it. I'm just trying to find the actual like news of the who, uh, where they declared a public health emergency. Uh, just so I don't have to source like uh, a news agency or something like that. You can read it from the, the source itself. So whilst you look for that, um. I'll go over a couple of examples of viruses. Uh, we've gone over the times that we've been making these dangerous viruses. I'll go over times that those viruses have escaped. So the uh, smallpox virus escaped three times from labs in England in the 60s and 70s, causing 80 deaths and about uh, 80 cases and about three deaths. Sorry. Um, so uh, dangerous viruses have leaked out of labs almost every year since. Uh, coming more recently, the SARS-1 virus uh, has leaked from laboratories in Singapore, Taiwan and no less than four times from the Chinese National Institute of Virology in Beijing. Uh, and because the reason why SARS-1 is so easy to escape from these labs is because we didn't have a vaccine for it, so the scientists were basically completely unprotected. And, you know, they're working in these, like, you know, biohazard safety level 2 environments. They get the virus and then there's just no protection against it. And, um, basically... So yeah, and you know, if this the if this new virus if it was made in a lab, we also wouldn't have a vaccine for that, of course. And if they're working at a biosafe level two, as they are, then they're gonna catch this new one and they're gonna spread it. It would not be weird at all for this to escape the lab, work be made in a lab. And uh, Xi Zhongli, I'll read um, her grant proposal that um, Doctor Dazak uh, helped her get. Let's find the. Uh, I mean, just to, to comment on that, I don't think that the fact that there is no vaccine is like... I understand the argument you are trying to make. I don't think the fact that there is no vaccine to COVID is is evidence of anything. Maybe no, that, we that, that would just be... It doesn't, that, it doesn't that, disprove the opposite. That, that would just be why it would be able to escape so easily. Is what I'm, I'm justifying how it could escape, because, you know, the idea would be that this is such a high security lab, and I'm saying yeah, yeah, how it would escape yes. quite easily, actually. Uh, just gonna look for the. Oops, it is. Mm. 
I cannot find this grant proposal for life of me. And for now, I can go over the um, Wuhan lab shutdown. So, uh, ge cell phone geolocation data from um, well, acquired by NBC shows no activity in the lab from the 7th of October to, through to the 24th of October, 2019. And, uh, you know, this is very, very close to the first confirmed case on the 17th of November, especially considering this probably isn't the first confer this probably isn't the first actual case. We know this isn't patient zero, so, you know, somebody else has to have been infected before him. And, um, yeah, in the, in the incubation period as well, it would not be odd at all that this uh, these two events were, um, you know, linked. And, you know, the U.S. State Department has also waited on this. They have said uh, the U.S. government has reason to believe that several researchers inside the WIV became sit in, sick in autumn 2019 before the first identified case of the outbreak with symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common sense and common seasonal in illness. And sorry, what kind of you said the U.S. government said that I believe it's Mike Pompeo that said it. Um, no, it was in a U.S. State Department fact sheet, and uh, David Asher, uh, a fellow of the Hudson Institute, also said that it's the case. So yeah, if you could send me that, please, I would. Sure. So we can take a look. So if I'm not mistaken. The, when I claimed about the, the, the director general waited a day or two to declare uh, the correct wording is actually a public health emergency of international concern, but we can talk about it as a, a global health emergency, so which is the, the highest like, emergency level. So it was an, apparently, according to the Hill itself, it wasn't one or two days later, it was just like the same day right after the emergency committee met. So they first met in January 23rd, I believe. And there were, like, people had different opinions back then. And the, the overall, say, the, the consensus, somewhat of consensus at the time, was that there was no evidence to declare it a, a global health emergency. Then, I believe a couple of days later, or in the same week, the director general asked the committee to meet again, and they did so on January 3rd. And in that occasion, they advised uh, uh, the director general to declare a public health emergency of international concern, and the director general did that issue that declaration in the same day. So I can so send is, you the sources if you want. Yeah, sure. This is when they're calling it a public health emergency, but I'm seeing here. Uh, surely, if this is the same thing as a pandemic, why did it take them till the 11th of March to declare a pandemic? Why did it take them well, so I mean, long to declare a pandemic? What do, what do, what do you mean? Well, declare a pandemic in what sense? Like. Uh, I've got a paper so here from, a pandemic or just word the from pandemic? NIH, it's called Who Declares COVID-19 a Pandemic? It says they did it on the 11th of March 2020. That's when they Can declared I a pandemic. See this? Yeah, I've sent it in, it's the... Uh, Can I see the source? Yeah, it's the PubMed source. Alright, PubMed, sorry. Let me take a look. So, like, mm -hmm. if they were so willing to call this a public health emergency back in January, why did it take them till March? call it pandemic if they're apparently the same thing i mean they're not the same thing right one is an official terminology that carries policy changes so it affects how the who itself works and one is just a term that they use for let's say the media or the general public to so you know that there's if, a pandemic around. so would they not then be trying to kind of temper the media reaction there in other words cover china's arse is that is not, not going to be the case then? If they're not declaring it the scary media word, which will get the media hype. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see if that's the case. You can like Google and the, the who declares uh, coronavirus or COVID uh, a public health emergency. So it's like you can find that pretty easily. And again, as I said, they had used the word pandemic before, and it hmm, made the news yeah. the non several times. And then they the non kept using the words. So... Yeah, exactly. The non-China allies within the WHO were calling it a pandemic 
but the China allies weren't calling it a pandemic. So does this not kind of speak to bias here? Who who are the China allies that you are talking about here? Because whoever the wasn't calling a pandemic has no role in this. Whoever wasn't calling a pandemic. Whoever wasn't who? calling a pandemic, I'm going to call them a China ally. No, no that's no, that's mm, why. Yeah, like, you it are begging very, the question. So it Chinese was very, allies, Chinese it was allies very are, clearly are not, pandemic. Chinese allies are not. No, no. If you're defined as a Chinese ally, everyone who was in declaring a pandemic, that's literally begging the question. And, and, there are several people in the who work in the who that whose job is not to declare a pandemic. Their job isn't to discuss that. They, sure, I'm not. I'm not talking about like. I'm not versus... talking about like the janitors and the cleaners. I'm talking about actual like virologists, public health officials who were not willing to call it a pandemic until the 11th of March, even though their experts were saying, hey, this is a pandemic internally. I'm saying that those guys are fucking chilling for China. See, that's the thing about what I told you about. The people in charge of, let's say, declaring, quote, declaring the pandemic, which again has no policy effect, are the people who later declared the pandemic, are the people who were saying, who were using the word pandemic in, in official communications and in press briefings, they just hadn't like, the WHO itself hadn't publicly announced it because the, uh, it the looks... committee had not advised it. And again, those guys... This, the, this says this right here, the World the Health Organization on March 11th, 2020 has declared the novel coronavirus as a global pandemic. So... It is the organization is declaring it here, so clearly there were some people in the organization who were holding it back from declaring this, even though there were these internal Chinese, there were these guys who were against China internally saying that's a pandemic way earlier, but the organization itself clearly has some powerful people holding the organization itself back from calling it a pandemic. Could that perhaps be the director Chen role and his little cohort of allies? Uh, first, no, because the director general has like he literally has no role does he have no influence so does he have no influence over his own organization i think he's probably got a great deal of influence define define influence and what there he has influence on some parts of the organization not other parts so uh, let's say i'm your boss i would probably have influence over you right well can you fire me yeah i'm your boss so that's not that's not the case in the the who so yeah. So does does he have no power? Like, is he just like a figurehead or something? Is he like the queen? Like, does he? No, what, he what is his job? He has administrative powers. Is, is administrative powers not include alongside. hiring and firing? Not for elected positions. Okay, so uh, who who is all the people who are involved in this uh, declaring of it to being a pandemic? What, what are all the positions that mm -hmm. make up that? Well, it should be, unless they change it very recently, the emergency committee. Whoa, 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 but didn't you say that the emergency committee were all saying it's pandemic back in January? Why did they not declare a pandemic back in January? That's it. Well, no, I said that the, the, the emergency committee was uh, had declared a global health emergency, or if you are going to... Yeah, but you were, you were saying that, they, public health emergency that they were internally, internally they were calling media, a pandemic, and, though. You said internally they were calling a pandemic. Not internally, not not internally, officially and like publicly. They you can find the head of the committee or, or members of the committees reusing the word pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So they they so press they briefings, for example. So that that committee already thought it was a pandemic. So why did they? Why was it in only until the eleventh of March that they declared a pandemic? Did they just forget? Well. They find declare a pandemic. Like, what, what do you mean declare a pandemic? They have As seen in, the pandemic, uh, there, there's this article that I sent you, who declares COVID-19 a pandemic. Clearly there's some thing, some sort of operation that they can perform to declare it a pandemic. They were saying it was a pandemic before this, long not, before this, not by official, your words. Not official. You just said publicly they were so saying it. Is, yes. Publicly. Okay, so, 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 so. They were using so, the so, word, so, let me clarify. Let the me people clarify. on this council they were using think the it's word pandemic. pandemic. So they clearly think it's a pandemic, These, the people on this council, yet it wasn't declared a pandemic. Did they either forget so to declare again, a pandemic officially, that's not, that's, or that's were there people holding it, it back? 
It, it literally so, is. See, again, that's not how it works. I'm, it, it, I'm asking no, you. Those not. are the, o those are the only is options. Not officially declared. A pandemic is not a policy. Uh, I'll say, was this, so is this not official? Not... National Library of Medicine, abstract, the World Health Organization on March 11th has declared the novel coronavirus a global pandemic. Is that, is, is there no official when... thing going on here? Well, the declaration was that the director general in a uh, at a press briefing he used the word we can uh, let, let me read no, that's... we have therefore made assessment that covid-19 can be characterized as a pandemic that was that so it's the director general who's holding it back as... then i thought you said he had no part in declaring again, a pandemic again 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 a pandemic's not an official categorization. It clearly, of this looks pretty like, official to me. I'm not going to lie. World Health Organization on March 11th has declared the uh, novel coronavirus a global pandemic. It, this looks pretty official. I'm not going to lie. This doesn't look like a blog post or something. This is on NIH. This is on PubMed. But again, no, no, no. Okay. Again, you are conflicted to different things. It's not official in the sense that there is no committee, uh, like, the signs, okay, let's set this. Well, earlier you said the committee, policy, the, the committee no... you're talking about is the committee that declares a pandemic. You were saying that they declared a pandemic. Declared the pandemic in so, the sense that they okay, so if they don't, the word pandemic if there, and they if there assess, is, if there is they no, they assess whether it's a pandemic or they assess so whether if, it's a pandemic. So if there well, is no, no committee, for... then what is this talking about? It's saying the World Health Organization. Who said there's no committee? You said there was no committee that declares a pandemic. You said that just right there's now. No, there's no... No, no, no. Okay, let me clarify that. There's no official declaration of pandemic in the sense that... This looks no very official to me. And say, Let me Are you explain. saying this is an unofficial publication on NIH? Is this unofficial? I am trying to explain it to you. I am trying just, to Just tell me, is this unofficial? In official what sense? It's official in the sense that, Offic yes, the who said it. You're using the it's words It's not official here. in the sense that there's official okay, designation so the as, who. like, a, a policy. Who within the who? I don't care about policies, don't care about any of that. Who within the who gets to say, right, the who itself is now officially declaring it a pandemic? Who does that? See, that's the problem. What do you mean declaring a pandemic? Using the word pandemic? What, what's King the, Christ! Because this not, article, I, this PubMed they article. Are not issue, they, they are not issuing. Open your a, eyes and look at the PubMed article. Context. It says, the World Health Organization on the 11th of March, blah, 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 declares a global pandemic. So clearly, some sort of official process has gone into this publication being published. What was that? What was the process there? Who may have to sign off you know, on this? You know you can li like literally read the, the opening remarks of the director. I want you to tell me. Itself, and you can know this. I have read it through. Remember? We have therefore made this assessment. I have read it to you. So yes. So it is the director general who has to sign off on it. So it was therefore the director general who was holding off from calling this a pandemic. As a say word, sir. So it is therefore the director general who has to sign off on it. So it is therefore the director general who was holding off calling a pandemic this all, whole time. I will try to explain it again. A pandemic is not an official. I don't care. It's very pandemic. official. Very official. Right here. It, I don't, it's in it NIH. Doesn't matter if you very, have very official. Explain. I'm not asking if it has policy implications. Don't care about that. I care about if it's if it gets put into NIH. It's pretty fucking official to me. This is not an opinion piece, piece or anything. This is fucking PubMed here. This is not a. It's not an op-ed in the New York Times or something. This is Director General has said. Yep, this is a pandemic. We're signing off on this. The WHO itself is saying this is a pandemic. That sounds very official to me. Is that not official? So I'm trying to explain it again. If you interrupt me, I'm just not going to explain it. The WHO itself has like it has a like every organization a specific uh, person who represents organization. That person for the WHO is the Director General. So when there are news in the sense that, oh, the WHO declared this, or the WHO declared that, they can be talking about either what a committee or, or the organization itself did, what they decided. So for example, in the sense that they say, oh, the WHO declared uh, uh, it a public health emergency. In that case, it was declared by the Director General after recommendation by the Emergency Committee. That's an official declaration in the sense that it's something that exists physically in the rules of the WHO. It's not just like a word, it, it means something. For a pandemic, in the sense that the WHO declares it a pandemic, in the case of the 
the news articles that they are being you are sourcing like uh, PubMed, they are referencing the speech of the director general on March 11. Because it's when the director general himself made a, a a press conference and then said that we have therefore made assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Now, what you may find some uh, articles or news sources or some things like that before that time, when members of the emergency committee and some other committees that participated in the WHO press briefings were using the word pandemic. It wasn't an official declaration, let's say, because it doesn't mean anything. It's like, oh, the who declares it, uh, I don't know, a, a problem. So it's not they, they officially declared a problem. It's that, okay, okay, this is a problem. Uh, this is a pandemic. Um, the first time, I, I believe, so... the general, director general, used the word pandemic directly to refer to coronavirus very explicitly was in March 11th. So why did it take him so long? Is that clear? Did it take him so long? I don't know. Ask him. Uh, does that? Well, I mean, all of it's his scientists. Who, it's, were, again, it's not. It's not who policy. Uh, no, 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 no. But all of his scientists were saying, "Hey, that's a pandemic, uh, Tedros. Why did it take him so long?" Again, I don't know. Yeah, Is it possible that he's covering for China's arms? If he was covering, do you think the like the people literally in charge of actually going for like actually investigating this problem would not be using the word pandemic as they were? Um, I'm not sure they were. You were saying the American people who are not allied with China were using the word <laughs> pandemic. The who investigators, four out of ten of them, uh, have Chinese links. So I mean, the people in charge of investigating clearly are quite. Tips See, towards you China. are conflating the, the members of the infill team with the members of the emergency committee. Those people are yeah, yeah, I don't care about the fucking emergency committee then. Fine, they're cool. Whatever. Don't well, care about you them. should care because they are the ones that are the, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, so, the they declared, so they declared it a pandemic. The emergency committee have declared it a pandemic. They, so why did it take Tedros so long to say yes, it's in a the pandemic? Sense, they declared a pandemic in the sense that they used the word pandemic to refer to COVID. If that's what you mean with declaring a pandemic, yes, then they yeah. declare a pandemic. So They did, did not declare a pandemic in the sense that they didn't establish I, an official I don't policy care or about they didn't who, do anything I don't care official. about the official you policies. You should care because that's I what matters not matter it is not mat it is immaterial to this argument right now what i am saying is the top who scientists who are in charge of declaring what a pandemic is and isn't they were saying this is a pandemic Sorry. and why did tedros take so fucking long after that happened to say yes this is a pandemic so you're telling me that whether like the actual policy and what the who does regarding COVID doesn't matter, but the fact Not that even a the director bit. general took, took, far, far, took far weeks longer than other members of the emergency committee to use the word pandemic is extremely relevant because he was allegedly covering for China. Oh, come on. Yes. No, do you have a response to any of that? <laughs> the whole argument you're having is that a guy who has no say on setting policy, who has no say on declaring an emergency, who has literally no say on, on declaring whether COVID is a problem or not, except for the official role. So it is he official. took too long to use a specific word. Yeah, because I think he, I'm trying, I'm showing right now that he is a uh, he China has shell. A, a official role in declaring, he has a specific role, he has a specific role in declaring a public health emergency. How is he a China lie again? He, he, Have you been listening to any? Because he's not been declaring it when literally all of his top scientists were saying, "Yes, this is a this is a pandemic." Why did it take him so long after that? See, see issue by declaring, you mean using a specific issue? Yeah. So, so they, so, so his his, his top scientists than, yeah, were yeah, telling him. Let, let's use that word then. 
His top scientists were telling him that this was a pandemic. Why did it take him so long to say it's a pandemic? So they weren't telling him then. Was he just an idiot? That's not how it works. The top scientists in the who doesn't they don't go there and tell the the who drivers okay this is a pandemic you should declare a pandemic. They were just using the word. I didn't I didn't say they so therefore you should declare a pandemic. They had his top his top scientists his top scientists. You specifically claim they were telling him they were telling him that it was a pandemic again. No. That's yes. Not yes. I am they saying that they tell. I am saying that they told him it was a pandemic, not that they then go on and say you should therefore declare this pandemic because we've been over how there is no declaration of pandemic. Well, they, whatever. They, Fine. They, but his his top scientists his top scientists were saying that this is a pandemic. They were saying those words. They thought it was a pandemic. The people who are surely experts in pandemics, they were saying this is a pandemic. Why did it take them so long to say it's a pandemic? You're, you're asking me why a specific person took... It's not just some... Don't just say a specific long. person. A specific word. It's not just some yeah, random it's guy. He's again, the he's, WHO he's director the, general. He's not the charge. He is the WHO he Director General. Anything, You're not going to convince me that he is just unimportant to a pandemic. He is very important. He's completely important. Way. He's completely important to the WHO response for the pandemic, really. I don't Again, you, you can read the, his, his assessment. He had he took very, very long See, to declare you are caring pandemic. more about whether he took... You, you are caring yes, because I'm trying to prove he, that he's he a China that. shell. I'm not trying to prove I that there was no policy word, place. No, no. This is completely is that, is immaterial to the discussion. Using word of words. Ah, come on. Yes! Do you have an argument against it? Or are you just going to say, come on, he was, there was no de official declaration, that doesn't exist. Or are you going to have an argument against how, wh how, why it took him so long to declare it? Or not declare it, but you're going to get triggered again. Why did it take him so long to admit that it's a pandemic? If by admit you mean using the specific words? Yes! Well, there are several possibilities, let's say. I don't think I can say any for sure, because like I can't tell you what he was thinking. I can't tell you uh, whether he was, uh, whether he had to ask for other people, whether he didn't think it was needed, because it isn't something the who does. The who doesn't declare pandemics in that sense. You like It doesn't really happen. You can't really find it. So they just say it unofficially in press conferences. Uh, maybe he was covering for China, if you want to, to say that. And maybe he decided that he, he would be silent for a month after everyone else had said, everyone that matters had used the word pandemic in press conferences. And then he decided not to because somehow that would be better for China. Well, yeah, if you want to believe that, sure. Okay, so you gave uh, two options other than he's a China shell. So you're saying he has to act. There are several options, right? Uh, you, just you, give two. You, you gave two. Okay, so let's go through those two. He has to ask other people before he can declare a pan. Before he can just use the word pandemic, or so you don't get triggered at the word declare. Didn't say he so has. okay, okay. Oh, I I, I'm not I saying you're saying this. I'm going over the options one by one and explaining to you why they're you did stupid. Say, you did I'm was, you, I am you going did, over the you options you asked. gave one by asked. one. If he doesn't did have not, to, you did. did you did say that. I. I wrote it down exactly as you were saying. So, so did he just want to talk to other people first? Like, what was the point? Surely he should just be talking to the committee, who are an expert in this. Why wasn't he, why he, was he talking to his mum about it? Talking to his brother? Cousin? Who was he talking to? There are several other committees in the who, several of which... So, uh, why, is it, why is he talking to these people? Why is he talking issues, to them? Let's say. Why is he talking to them? Just for fun? Why? Why is the director general of the who? No. Why is he talking to them in order to the in order to call it a pandemic? Why is he doing that? If he already knows it's Maybe pandemic, he wants why? another opinion. I don't know what's going through it's, his head. It doesn't okay? matter. What do you mean opinion? It's just like do I need another opinion on whether one plus one equals two? It met all the criteria. His fucking scientists were saying guess, it's a well, pandemic. Like what other opinions yeah, what do you need criteria? there? Tell, tell me what criteria did it met? Uh, it has to be infecting like multiple like health zones they call it or something like that, and it was. I can't remember the exact wording. 
that like um the other thing you said is it, just it wasn't needed doesn't have to call it a pandemic then i'd ask you know a why did he declare why did he say that it's pandemic on the 11th of march then and uh, b i think it's very very much needed because you know uh, you need to you know get people worried about this you need to get warn people about it you know though if the who director general saying in february there's a pandemic going on then i think i would put a lot of weight behind it because in february nobody fucking gave a shit about this at least my country nobody was caring they're like oh it's, it's over in china if the who director general had said this is literally a pandemic that would be like people might perk up a little bit you could have saved lives by that uh saying it he's not a declaration okay I mean, again, uh, as I said before, the who doesn't uh, either declare or say like officially that but it's a this pandemic. guy. This it guy. Really you, I don't you, care no, 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 about no, no. official declarations. Stop mentioning happen. official declarations. Don't care. Doesn't matter. What I care about is why he didn't it is say it. I know. So stop fucking mentioning it. Why do? Why didn't he I'm say? Why didn't he say I'm that? I'm to explain you that. That the way the who works is that they usually don't like they don't say stuff like that in a press conference because they don't think it's needed. They just have official people like the the, the members of the committee, for example, using the word, and then they don't feel the need to to go there and specifically say okay they, to have the director general say uh, go and say oh, okay this is a pandemic. They they just issue an alert and they use the word. You can find that like. Pretty much, uh, there may be a couple of exceptions, but in pretty much every situation in the past. So we can argue that maybe the guy should have realized it sooner that this was a, a special situation that he should have used the word before. I can agree with that. Uh, but the idea that just because he didn't use the word, so just because he did what the who has been doing for decades, the way who has been operating for decades just because he did that that means he's a china too he was trying to protect china I, I don't think that is how the who have been operating for decades though because the rest of the who who aren't china shells were saying it was a pandemic back in february or january you were saying you know they were saying it was a pandemic very very early on so you know if the rest of the who is doing it who yes, aren't affiliated the, the, with china the technical experts the technical experts of the who have been since a pandemic they have used the word pandemic in press conferences those same technical experts have yes have also used the word pandemic or other similar words in the past in other situations uh for the last couple of decades the last couple of the last few decades such as what does thing what does not happen what does not happen usually is that they get the director general to go there and issue a statement him saying of him saying okay this is really a, a pandemic I mean, he just didn't say it at all like yeah. he, he didn't like you know tweet it out he didn't know if i can do any it would be very very easy for him to say guys start preparing it's a pandemic very very early on before the 11th of march it would have been piss easy for him to do it and it would have saved lives i mean again you can tell me okay maybe the guy should have realized that this was a special situation and he should have broken the whole protocol and then done that. Oh, I, I can't agree. I can't. I can't agree with that idea. I can't agree. Maybe is it who protocol to not say it's pandemic? You're saying break the who, who protocol. protocol. Not it's not how it's not it's who protocol not to have or, or better yet it's not who protocol to have the director general. Yeah, yeah, okay, but, but you were you were saying that he is not the he's not, the, he's not the one saying. Is it is it specifically against the protocol to call a pandemic a pandemic? Uh, can you just roll? Uh, wait. Wait for like two seconds, my cat's trying to get in my bedroom, so I have to open the door for him. <laughs> Just really quickly. Just a second. Uh, so, sorry for that. The, pro the word protocol in the sense that I used it in that sentence is was referring to there's a long tradition a long custom in the who not to ask the director general to to act like that so you, you it doesn't really happen you meet again you can find a couple of exceptions in, in very specific and dangerous situations like maybe ebola you can find it but for most situations that 
that's that's not true. The the emergency committee and the technical experts of the who use the word pandemic because they are talking to the press, they are talking to each other, they they know it. The director general sometimes might use it, but it, you can't really find several examples of the who director general saying this issuing a statement or going to a press conference and, and saying this is a pandemic. So again, I agree. Maybe he should have. Uh, broken that quote protocol in the sense that he should have acted differently from how the who has been working for the last decades and then declared the pandemic sooner he did not i don't think that's enough yeah, so why following he... the tradition of the who is enough for him to be a china too so why didn't he why didn't he declare earlier if he if you think he should have why didn't he I just told you it's not how the who operates. Maybe it should be. He should have broken that. Yeah, maybe it should be. Sure, we, you can talk about. It. And like, can there you can, can very, you very... can you show me that that is how the who operates? I really just don't believe that. I don't believe <sighs> that the who doesn't call pandemics pandemics. No, no, see, the who calls pandemics pandemics in the sense that the who technical experts and the who why not the director general or in other situation. Because they don't think that's his job, and they don't think him doing it really matters. It's, it's have for like again some situations. Ebola might have, might have it because of how like dangerous it was. But if you find, for for example, if you go in in the WHO website right now, and you go to a list of the pandemics or if of the other kinds of diseases, regional diseases, things like that, that. You are not going to find a specific director general uh, citation or statement for every one of those. You okay, might um, find for I've some, act, like a bone. I've got a little uh, bee in your bonnet here. Uh, here's uh, something from the 26th of February, where it is, uh, who says COVID-19 not a pandemic? This is him specifically saying it's not a pandemic. So why do you say it's not Can a I pandemic? Yeah, I've got, I sent it to you. So why do you say it's not a pandemic when his experts were saying it is a pandemic? He's specifically saying not a pandemic. He's not just neglecting to say it is a pandemic. Well, I mean, the, the text is, itself is very short. So he's just saying uh, Dr. Treble's warn against calling the disease a pandemic. So Why is he doing that, though, if uh, when, it is a pandemic? Is I don't often warn against calling elephants grey, because elephants are grey. So why is he warning against saying the truth? Why do you do that? See, I'd have to go back and then look at what the emergency committee was, if they were using, of the most of them were using the word back then, whether there was consensus of it being a I'd, pandemic or I not. thought you said it, they were using that word in January. And many of them were, including, I believe, the head. I just don't know if there was a consensus back then. I'd have to look at that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I don't know if there is a consensus in that regard or not. Maybe there was, maybe this... if there was, if there was, let let me verify. If there was a consensus in that it was a pandemic, then yes, I agree that Dr. Tred Tedros should have called it a pandemic. And in the case that he actually warned against calling it a pandemic, so I can't really verify because the source is the text is very short. But if that's Here's the case, then I I agree with him. Let me take a look. Yeah, so again, I have to go and find and look at the statements of the emergency committee and see whether they had some consensus or. I mean, not. you you were saying you were saying were that were... back in the uh, back in January or early February they were already calling it a pandemic, but suddenly that's all changed yeah, now maybe, that you found yeah, out that maybe, he was no, saying no, no, it no, wasn't. No. No, 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 no. I said many of them were calling a pandemic, and many of them were calling a pandemic, including, if I'm not mistaken, the head of the emergency committee. What I'm telling you now is that I don't know whether there was a consensus. I don't know whether everyone agreed. I don't know if most people agreed. I know a lot of people in that committee were using the word. But if you, you read that, that same source you give me, you can find that the who, quote, the who no longer uses the pandemic classification. Okay, but he is specifically saying it's not a pandemic. We're not talking about official classification. Stop bringing it up. We're not talking about that. He's specifically saying, don't call it a pandemic when it was a pandemic. 
Quote, the new coronavirus that's sickening tens of thousands of people is not yet a pandemic, but, but has the potential to become one if countries don't work together to allow its spread. Mm -hmm. So Again, you're saying like, it's not a pandemic? I can't... When his he's experts saying were saying it was a pandemic, a pandemic in, in February. And it was a pandemic. I remember Some of them were, yes. Some of them yeah, were. I mean, if, if, yes. if I, any of them weren't, then they called it worse than me, and I'm not an expert in virology. So again, incompetence or malice? You don't think there's any actual reason, reasonable like doubt over whether coronavirus was at mm, the time nope. not not, not I, whether not whether it was going to become a pandemic or not? It, if, if it was I at the time of pandemic. I very specifically remember. In February. I very specifically remember watching, you know, fucking. Um, Peak Prosperity and all those guys saying, look, it's in all these different regions, it fits the criteria for a pandemic, it's a pandemic, guys, prepare. And uh, then you have Ted Rosk saying, it's not a pandemic, don't call it a pandemic, don't prepare. Well, there's a nice article in The Who about how they, how they use the word pandemic. So that might be. Let me just take a, a quick read. Again, you're just telling me like your your memory of the situation of there where people say it was a pandemic or not. I mean, I was calling it a pandemic back then. So am I smarter than them? Sure. Are they incompetent or are they malicious? I mean, no, there's the there's the possibility you were right. They were wrong and. That doesn't necessarily imply that you are smarter than them or that they were malicious. I mean, People is, can be wrong. Is that not incompetence when um, you know you have these uh, glo what you have these pandemic experts who are slower to call something a pandemic than some kid who isn't a virologist? Does that not kind of speak to incompetence? I I was just I was studying maths at the time. I'm not a fucking virologist. What is that not in utter incompetence? that I was able to see a pandemic before they did. So, the one thing you have to remember is that the who actually declared pandemic, and by pandemic here we are not just the word, but like uh, officially a pandemic, in... You said January before. Epidemic. I'm very certain you said that they declared a public health emergency or whatever their official term for it is yes. in January. Because you were, you were getting on me for saying yes. like, oh, they weren't calling it a pandemic when uh, I found uh, out in February. But you were saying, uh, oh, actually, they declared a public health emergency in January. So, <laughs> and now you're saying that the, they, maybe they didn't yes. know it was a pandemic in February. Who knows? You're completely going against now, yourself. Now here. I'm trying to talk about something else about how they declared mm. a pandemic in 2009. So if you could shut up and listen to the government <laughs> Because otherwise angry? you are trying to straw man my position. I is I'm not straw man. You're just trying to. I'm trying to explain. Yes, it is. I'm talking I about. I'm talking about a different situation. What you said. I'm talking about a different situation. No, I'm, talking I'm talking about, about the one we're talking situation. about. I don't care about this different yeah, so, situation. So yeah, you ask you asked me a question. I'm trying to answer the question. You're not letting me. What answer. question would that so, be? That's not going to. Well, I didn't ask about 2009. About why they who didn't declare a pandemic? Remember? No, 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 no. I specifically. Yeah, so you I did ask me that. Well, fucking like 10 minutes ago, I specifically said that um, you, uh, you, you said you said earlier on in this debate that they, uh, I, I said that, oh, I was calling it a pandemic in February and they hadn't called it a pandemic yet. And you were saying, actually, they called it a public health emergency in January, implying that they are the same thing and that, oh, oh uh, got you there, buddy. And then now that you found out that Ted Roast was calling it not a pandemic in February, that suddenly this is all flipped over. You don't see that you've completely flipped your position here. First, no, the pandemic and uh, a global health emergency are a public so then health why emergency did, of international so why, concern. So it's why not did the same you, thing. I so, did not okay. say they're the same so thing. I why did, did imply they're the so same thing. So why did you retort to me saying that they weren't calling it a pandemic in February with actually before February in January they declared a public health emergency? Why was that a retort? Did you just want to, you know, put an extra fact out there? Did you just want to speak? The it was a retort. I mean, no, 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 no. I was explaining to no, no, no. I was explaining to you how back then some some people I can't say wow I can't say it. if it's all people in the committee 
or if it's the most people, I know some people were using the word no, pandemic. This is, this is a complete, this is a different That's thing. What I'm talking about. This is a different thing. I this said, is not a different thing. This is I said, what I'm I about. said that they hadn't called it a pandemic in February. Those were my words. And then you said, actually, they called it a public health emergency in January. I was saying they hadn't called it a pandemic in February. You, you retorted with they had called it a public health emergency in January. So I was, uh, so you're equivocating pandemic and public health emergency here. You're not seeing not, that you're doing no. that. How not? How I, not? I, I really don't. I, I, I really don't. Maybe you didn't understand me. Maybe I used the word, uh, the wrong word. If that's the case, let me clarify. No, they are not the same thing. Okay. So what I was talking about is that when I say they didn't declare a, a, a pandemic, I suppose you're talking that the specific director general of the who did not use the word pandemic did not issue a declaration of the word pandemic even though several of the members of the emergency committee had used that word before right you asked me why did he wait so long for like to let's say issue a statement or to, to say that it was a pandemic and i was trying to give an example of when the who used declared it a pandemic and then really a pandemic in both the the sense of pandemic that they use now and this official sense of pandemic that they used back then in 2009 because of the flu pandemic and they were very criticized for it because of of how soon let's say they use the word pandemic because uh, they used the, they declared the pandemic and then uh, a lot of people thought it wasn't as severe as as severe enough for it to be a pandemic and then countries had to deploy specific policies that affect people and then people didn't like that so there was a lot of criticism um, i am not sure this is but well, the the r naught of this disease was vastly higher than that of the 2009 uh flu outbreak vastly 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 higher so if they were just worried about like a little bit of ooh, maybe a little bit of public backlash fucking man up seriously are they pussies so no, we're down to incompetence malice <laughs> or cowardice that, that's not worries. Uh, are, are, are they incompetent are they cowardly survive. or are they malicious international organizations international organizations literally survive on having pub good public relations so when the who was criticized back in in 2009 because of its pandemic declaration countries actually cut funding to it for example so they're Some cowardice NGOs like bill gates so that's what it is it's cowardice <laughs> if you believe that not mm, that's what cowardice is for a mistake is covered yeah then they, sure. they cared more about their wallets than saving lives See, that's that's very misleading because it, it implies not that really. they knew it was it was a, yes yeah yes it is. if I, if they, I knew it was it a pandemic that... they knew it was a pandemic believe me I'm not like smarter than the combined forces of the who so uh, are you gonna let me answer or do you wanna speak to yourself uh, you can yeah, answer all you want I've given you time it's the I'm not gonna let you fucking answer, just talk shit answer. over and over and over again I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Um, yeah. Let me know when you can like make some sense. Are you fucking like, gonna start talking? Give I've given you an opportunity. You're getting very upset that I'm not letting you get a point out. So get it out. And that is him seeding the debate. Definitely.